Hey, welcome back. Um, just on to part two of our uh, photography of uh, marine tanks. Um, I guess now we're onto you've got your camera and uh, you want to work out what settings to use. Um, yeah, as mentioned in series one, or sorry, video one of the series, give the full auto a crack first, see what you like. Pop, pop the lens on, fire it on, look for your full auto on the um, cannons. It's this um, green setting here. I'm sure Nikon have got the same sort of deal. Pop it on there. That'll basically make all the decisions for you. If you have four eyes like me, take your glasses off. Look through the setting, aim what you want to find, half press the trigger down. You'll notice when I half press that, you'll hear this beep, which tells you that it's focused. Once it finds something to focus on, and then press the shutter the rest of the way down to get your shot. Um, it should, Now yeah, we're gonna get a flash shot here. Another reason why I hate using auto, but it's mean, it still gives you a decent shot. I'll put that back on so you can see it taking a picture of a lens there. Um, probably gonna be hard to see from a phone on into a camera screen, but um, it gives you a pretty cool shot. Um, you may find if it goes for the flash um, on your tank, you're gonna get some awkward reflections and stuff, particularly if you're not shooting straight on. So when you're like taking pictures of a tank, which I can turn over here. Uh, so I'm over here taking pictures of my clowns. Um, essentially, whether I'm on, um, whether I'm using the flash or not, you essentially don't want to um, be on an angle. So like, you don't want to be shooting like this. You don't want to be shooting like that. You don't want to be shooting like that or like that. You want to be as parallel as you can to your subjects. So you have a look for you. What do you want to shoot with? Even if you've got the flash on then. Even with the flash, um, if you're parallel, it's not too bad. Um, it'd be kind of hard to see there because the lighting in here is all weird because of, um, because of the halides and LEDs and room lights, whatnot. But yeah, that's shooting on auto. You can't go too wrong. You want to sit a decent distance from your tank, so your minimum focusing angle comes into play. Um, if your flash comes on, at least if you square, it won't be too bad. The only other thing you could really do, and I mean, you can see it on the camera here, is you probably want to close up the curtains um, and maybe turn other lights off. Um, to the room basically because you get these reflections and then when you're looking at your photos later on you'll be able to see the brick wall outside reflecting or you can see like up here the um, the window from the room is reflecting on there it just doesn't look good um, but we can go into more details that when we're doing full tank shots um, so yeah that's shooting auto basically point and shoot all right so we've covered shooting in um, automatic mode and uh, now you want to get a little bit more creative or take some slightly better shots for lack of better words and you want to shoot in full manual um, you do that by switching your camera onto the M I'm not sure if you're able to see on the video there but on uh, the Canons they have an M uh, where the little app pointer points to go straight to there um, <clears throat> you'll be able to just pick all of the settings there you're not going to be limited to what the camera decides is best it's going to be up to what you decide is going to be best so um, you need to set all of the settings there there are three that we primarily look into uh, there's uh, shutter speed, aperture, and ISO. The three of those, if you change one, it'll affect the other two. We'll go in detail a little bit more uh, further on at how each one will affect your picture and um, ways you can sort of dial your image in from there. But uh, to give you a baseline to get started, um, these settings will depend on your camera, your lens, your tank, the lighting, the lighting in the room, um, the time and day of your light cycle, it'll affect all of these things will affect the picture. So don't think that these settings will give you a, a silver bullet and you'll be taking pro photos in no time, but it'll give you somewhere to start. Um, for this sort of time um, on my tank, the halides are off. It's just LED only, so it's a little bit darker. Um, I would look to start off with a shutter speed of around one one hundredth of a second. Um, I'll put a screen grab on the picture on, on the video so you can see the, the setting screen that I look at. But one one hundredth of a second shutter speed, uh, an aperture of f three point two, and ISO of four hundred. Um, like I said, I'll go into details of what each of those mean in a second. But I'll grab a shot so we've got something to work with. Awesome, that's a pretty good baseline. Um, I'll put that picture on screen so you can see what we're looking at. All right, 
so let's look at the first main setting, which is shutter speed. Um, as pointed out, I started off with an average of one, or started off with a starting point of one one hundredth of a second. Um, if you wanted to, well, to explain that, you really need to just say that that's how long of a second the shutter is open when it's taking the picture. Obviously, the longer it's open, the more light comes in, the brighter the picture, but also the more chance there is for the subject to move, so you can get blurry images. So, to test it out, if I slowed my image right down to one twenty-fifth of a second, find something, uh, where's a fish? Oh, you can even hear it when the picture goes, it just, it's really slow. Um, rather than that crisp shutter sound, it, it takes a second to think about it. And no surprise, the resulting image is fairly blurry. Um, you can get away with the sh slow shutter speed if you're taking pictures of, of coral, particularly SBS or things that aren't moving a lot. Um, that can be a handy way to get more light into your image. Conversely, if I speed the uh, image or the shutter speed up, I'll go up to one two hundredth of a second. Instantly you hear it shoot a lot quicker. The image becomes a lot darker, but um, to be honest, one two hundredth of a second is closer than one twenty-fifth of a second. The image actually doesn't look too bad. I'll put on the screen what, what it came out as. Um, it goes to show that this lens is capable of getting much light in it, even at a short time frame. But uh, it, it's definitely clear to see that at one one hundredth of a second, the picture is much better. Um, all right, so that's covering shutter speed. Um, if your image is blurry, you're going to need to speed up the shutter. If your image is dark and you can't play with the other two settings much, you're going to have to slow your shutter speed down. Um, some lenses react better to quick shutter speeds than others, so you just have to play around with the different lenses you have and see how they go. Okay, our next setting, and probably the most complicated one to explain, is aperture. Aperture technically is the size of the opening in the lens when you take the picture. So obviously shutter speed is how long this, the lens is open for. Um, aperture is the size of the hole that opens. Um, it's a difficult thing to explain. It doesn't make a lot of sense, but um, basically it's represented by the letter F and then a number. <laughs> to describe it as easily as I can, the smaller the number, the less of the picture is in focus. The larger the number, the more of the picture is in focus. Um, so for instance, if uh, the, the setting I recommended to start off with was an f3.2 or an f4, somewhere around there. That's going to give us whatever picture we take, whatever we focus on, it's going to keep most of that in focus and the rest of the picture will get that fairly artistic blur. Um, that can give you a really nice dramatic shot. It draws the viewer's eye to the subject that you're taking the photo of. Um, where you have to be careful is if, and I see this a lot when people get new lenses that can do um, do like low apertures like f2.8 or even lower, people instantly go to that um, and take a picture and I, I did it myself uh, and you'll get the like the face or the, the head of the fish in focus and then the rest of the fish will blur out. Um, it doesn't look as good, you want to keep the whole fish in focus so if you're taking pictures and you're not getting the whole fish in focus, you're going to need to raise that aperture up a little bit to a higher level. Um, it's worth pointing out, and we'll go into full tank shots a little bit further in another video in the series, but obviously with a full tank shot, you're trying to get the entire tank in focus, um, so you're going to need to use a higher aperture value there, because otherwise you're taking a picture like a corner shot or something, and you've got a low aperture, you're going to get this corner of the tank in focus, and everything else is going to be blurred, and it's just going to look weird. Um, so if I take a couple of shots with a low aperture of 2.8, yeah, that works out all right. The fish, the fish's heads in focus, and the body just starts to fail it. It's fade off. You can see the scales like near the neckline, but then um, when you get towards the tail, it just sort of turns into an orange blur. On the same hand, if I bump up to say f seven point one, take the same picture. Firstly, you'll notice it's a lot darker, and that's because we've made the hole that the camera um, uses to take the picture a lot smaller, so it's letting less light in, which means it's darker. But what we can see is that it, you can barely see, but what is there is all in focus. Um, so basically, to get the artistic shots, it's nice to keep that aperture low as possible, but only low enough that you get the entire fish in focus. Um, with coral shots, you probably want to bump that up a little bit more because they tend to take up more of the frame of the picture. And as I said, with tank shots, you want to lift it right up. 
Okay, on to our third and final setting that we're going to focus on today, which is ISO. Um, ISO is a funny one to explain. It's basically the camera's cheat code um, to make the picture brighter. It's how much artificial light or how sensitive the camera sensor is to light. Um, so if you've set your other two settings, um, you've got the aperture where you want it and you've got your um, shutter speed where you want it, but your image is still dark, you can play with your ISO to bump it up. This sounds like a silver bullet, it's going to fix everything. The problem with it is, is that it does that by affecting the image quality. So you've probably seen when you've um, taken a picture on your phone late at night or in the dark, it can pick up the items, but the, it look really grainy. It looks like it's been hit with sandpaper or something. That's because the camera sensor has had to bump the ISO right up um, to make it work. So in a, in a perfect world, we try to keep the ISO as low as your camera will go. It's not always possible. Um, so on, on my camera, the lowest the ISO will go is 100. Um, I'll be blatantly honest, I almost never get to take a picture at 100. It's, you maybe will when you're outside in full sunlight, but uh, typically when we're taking pictures of fish tanks, we're inside, um, and even though we think we've got bright lights in them, it doesn't really compare to the sun. Um, so even when I've got my halides on, it'll still be two, 300 ISO. Um, if we start using flash, which we'll talk about in another video, then you can drop that ISO down to the minimum and, and work some other things, but um, that's a whole other ball game and I'm still learning it myself. So um, I won't cover that one anytime soon. But to um, give you the examples, I'll take a picture. I'll put my aperture back to 3.5, uh, shutter speeds 1 100th, and I'll take a picture at um, ISO 100. Uh, pretty dark image, but that being said, it is a good quality image. And then conversely, I'll bump the aperture up to say 1600. The other two settings exactly the same. And a drastically brighter picture, but it does look a bit grainy. So there are three settings um, that we really want to focus on. Um, the only other one that you would probably consider, but we can play with that in post-processing, is the white balance. Um, I find you can set that to auto, you can set that to a static value. Normally the, my camera, but I think other cameras are the same. The highest the uh, white balance will go is a um, Kelvin temperature of 9,900. Um, most of us run out of tanks these days, or reef tanks up around the 16, 18, 20, thousand Kelvin mark so it doesn't matter what you set the camera at it's probably not going to be there so you'll have to fix it up in post-processing um, that being said you put it on auto it's going to get you as close as possible um, or I just shoot with a static setting of the highest possible that does then play silly buggers with me though when I take pictures away from the fish tanks I go outside to take a picture of my daughter or something it gives it a bit of a blue hue which looks weird so you can leave it as um, auto and that'll pick the best in every situation Obviously, yeah, when you're doing post-processing, you can turn that up to 20,000 Kelvin and get the colors to look as they should to the eye. All right, wrapping up, that's uh, it for camera settings and taking basic shots of um, fish and coral through the glass of your tank. Um, totally open to ideas and feedback for what you think video three should be. Um, if it was up to me, I'd probably pick something along the lines of um, either full tank shots, um, top-down shots, or post-processing, we can cover all of those, but which one you guys want next is up to you. Um, welcome any feedback. Um, I'll try to be less nervous and fidgety in the next couple of videos. Um, and I'll also try and add a little bit more scripting so that I don't wander off um, point. But um, up till now, you've just got me wandering on shooting from the hip. So apologize for that, hope it's okay, hope it makes sense. Um, it's fairly late in the day, so my tank's always turned off. Sorry about the um, UV light kind of looks a bit like a disco in there but um well it does on the iphone camera anyway i promise you the fish aren't at a rave it just what it looks like every night um thanks again for watching hope to um get some more subscribers and uh, get the videos coming cheers